Welcome back in, Clips of Tiger fans, to another edition of Tiger Net Talk, broadcasting live on the front page of TigerNet.com, ClemsonPodcast.com, and every once in a while, because people like you have put us into the top ten on vocal, you'll catch us on the front page of www.voKle.com. So go by there, go by vocal. Like the program. You can follow us, I guess, on Vocal, kind of like you follow people on Twitter. It'll update you when we move the show. And as many of you are aware, if you follow the recent broadcast of the program, expecting Swanee number two at any minute, T minus four days or so away from bringing our first little girl into the world. We got a little boy, we got a football player, but the wife is going to be doing her part pretty soon to bring us baby number two and the first little girl in our family so uh, I hope you'll keep us in your thoughts and prayers as we go through all that over the next several days in any minute perhaps uh, you'll see me take a phone call in just a second and have to run out of here and uh, cut the 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 uh, I about said cut the cord maybe but uh, cut the show a little bit short glad to be with you all tweet to us hashtag TN talk throughout the week that's TNT a-L-K. Put that in there. Let people know you're talking about the program, and we'll be happy to read what you have to say on the air. Also, follow us on Twitter. We're at Clemson Podcasts. We bring you Clemson news, notes, and information, and opinion 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Email us, Clemson81 at gmail.com, and the phone lines are always open. You can call the number. I have all this information presented to you below. A little bit hard to read. I know sometimes on vocal because of the quality, but they're working on that. But we also do a, we also have, I should say, a YouTube archive version of the show in high quality, and I did hit record. Uh, when you're trying to do all of this, sometimes you make some major mistakes. But uh, I really appreciate everybody being with us, and we've got some great topics coming up. And don't forget, July 22nd and 23rd at the Grandover Resort in Greensboro, North Carolina, the 2012 Atlantic Coast Conference football kickoff. That's right. We are getting closer and closer to football season. If you're listening to the show right now on the front page of one of the websites we mentioned, click join. You can come in. You can text chat with us. You can chat in the chat room, which will be amazing. We can take video questions. Haven't done that yet on the program. Uh, And you can also submit text questions, which is totally awesome and one of the reasons that we have continued to use uh, Vocal as our provider for the program. We've tried them all. We've been around. And I, I think Vocal has given us the best opportunity to bring you a great program. But all that aside, and every show we got to do it, we got to give you the introduction, got to tell you how you can take part in the show. All that aside, we moved to the firestorm that was the Robert Kim Dietschy situation that went down several days ago. Michael Carville of the Atlanta Journal Constitution got it going when he was writing a, an article about Robert Kim Dietschy and the quote attributed to. Kim Dietschy said, I'm waiting on Clemson to offer Ryan, speaking of Ryan Carter, two-star prospect out of the Grayson High School, uh, out of Grayson High School over there in Loganville, Georgia. Uh, I'm waiting on Clemson to offer Ryan. When that happens, it's locked. It's a done deal. It's over. And Robert Kim Dietschy, single-handedly, 17-year-old, high school senior, before playing his senior year, fired up not just a, a storm across Clemson fans, Uh, but perhaps uh, one of the bigger storms we've seen in a while as far as college football goes in a recruit. And that was because I think, one, the article in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution did a bad job of relaying the information the way that Robert Kim Dietschy wanted it to come across. I think Kim Dietschy probably made some mistakes, but as any young man would do in the way he said it, I don't think he got across what he meant. And... Uh, Unfortunately, ESPN and other national pundits and media members went with it and ran with it and disappointingly pinned Robert Kimdichie to be the bad guy. Now, there's a couple of facts here, and I had a chance to talk with B.J. Bennett on uh, the drive down on the fan uh, in Brunswick, Georgia, several days ago. Had a chance to talk with B.J. Bennett about the situation on his program And there are a couple of things I did not get out there that I really wanted to. And I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get them out there. But I will get to them here on TigerNet Talk. First and foremost, before committing to Clemson University, 
Dabo Sweeney, bef be before Robert Kimdichie committed to Clemson University, we had the entire saga this summer, and it's been great. You know, in the past, we haven't done Tiger Net Talk in the summer, partially because there was sometimes not a whole lot to talk about. I think that's pretty fair when you, you see uh, this time of season being that dead period, that downtime for so many people. However, this year there's been a, there have been a number of events that have taken place that have you know, really allowed us to, to continue to do the show because of the popularity of all of the, uh, of all of the events that have taken place. But first and foremost was Dabo Sweeney's uh, acknowledgement of the word commitment and what that means at Clemson University. And it might not mean the same thing at University X as it does at Clemson. But Dabo Sweeney gave Robert Kimdichie, the nation's number one player in the country, every single opportunity, every opportunity to say, you know what, coach, I think I'm going to think about it a little bit more. Sure. He had several of his teammates already involved with Clemson's program. That wasn't a surprise to anybody, I don't think. Sure. Clemson has shown that they can put NFL linemen right there off the defensive line, guys from college right into the NFL. Daquan Bowers came in as one of the top recruits in the country. Had a subpar first and second year. And maybe some of that, and we talked to Daquan here on the program just a couple of weeks ago. If there was one question I didn't ask him that I would have asked him, looking back on it, I should have said, <laughs> well, I, I, maybe I shouldn't have because he's a lot bigger than me. Thank goodness he was on the phone and not in studio. Although he's welcome to come in anytime. The question I would have asked is, what was going through your mind during year one and year two? Were you, were, you know, were you fully, were you all in, as Dabo Sweeney likes to say? That would be the question I would uh, go back and ask Daquan Bowers. And when we get him back on, I might have to do that. He's, he said he's going to try and come back on during the football season. But Dabo Sweeney, after all this commitment stuff came out, said, you know, when you're committed to Clemson, we're committed to you. David Kamara, Wayne Gallman, we're committed to those guys, three-star and, and four-star guys. I mean, they're, they're not slouches, uh, unlike what some of the media uh, out there would have you believe. The, any, on any given year, Clemson would have taken those two guys with or without Robert Kimdichie. And there's no question. But Dabo Sweeney gave Kimdichie the opportunity. He said, you know what, if you're not sure, if you're not committed, don't commit. And that's what Dabo's been known to do. Kim Dietschy said, nope, he's sure he wanted to come. The thing that got everybody going, though, the thing that really turned a lot of people off and, and even made people text me and email me and say, yo, what's going on with this kid? You know, what's wrong with Robert Kim Dietschy? Why is he playing this card like that? Is because of that phrase, it's a done deal, it's over. Commitment in the minds now of Clemson fans who believe in what Dabo Sweeney's trying to do with this program, believe that commitment means it's done, it's over. You're committed to us, we're committed to you. And so that kind of got things brewing a little bit. But then the national media, the way they took it out of control, just drove me nuts. And all the stuff that was left out of Robert Kim Dietschy's comments, all the dot, dot, dots, everything, the fill in the blanks, the, you know, the connections that you had to make, the assumptions, weren't fair to this young man. They really weren't fair to this young man. And in a day and age where Twitter and, and social media and Facebook have kind of taken over, Kim Dietschy did what any player who wants to defend himself would do. And I don't blame him. He went, to, he went to Twitter and said, I don't like the AJC twisting up my words. Good for him. Good for Robert Kim Dietschy for standing up for what he believes in. Now, Greg Doyle of CBSSports.com just ripped Robert Kim Dietschy. And I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank David Hood, who writes for TigerNet.com. David Hood, who writes for the website that I work for. What a fantastic job David Hood did in uh, giving Greg Doyle a little bit of his own medicine, to say the least. In a telephone interview, though, with the New York Times a couple of days later, Robert Kim Dietschy says, you know what? He says that uh, Carter's recruitment would not affect his commitment to Clemson. 
Of course, he would like to play with him, Robert Kimdichie said, but if it doesn't work out, I'll still go to Clemson. Robert Kimdichie also told the New York Times he never demanded to Clemson to pursue Carter, but he did say that Carter joining him at Clemson would simply make make it a good decision or make it a, a better situation. Excuse me. There was no ultimatum. This was taken far and beyond by the media looking for things to talk about when it just didn't exist. And and that's you know and that's the that's how it went down. And it's unfortunate because I think you know you flash back 30 years, you think about recruiting at that time. Was it dirty? Yeah, sure. What was was there probably more illegal stuff going on against the NCAA rules? I, I don't know. But these kids don't have a whole lot to stand on once they sign with the university anyway. The only time these guys do have any leverage is right now. And I don't think that even if you, in the worst way thought, if you just totally disagreed with what I'm saying, and you said, no, you know what, he was trying to play Clemson. He's still trying to play Clemson. He wants to get his friend in, this two-star recruit, Ryan Carter. He wants to get him a spot at Clemson University. Even if you believed that that's the influence that, that Robert Kimdichie is trying to run with here at Clemson. Is there something so wrong with a young man trying to help out his friend. If there are 20 scholarships on a team, five of those guys may never touch the field. Maybe more. Some guys are going to transfer. Some guys aren't going to be happy. Robert Kimdichie, instead of committing last year, like he could have, the nation's number one player in the country, Instead of committing last year to Clemson or LSU or Alabama or wherever, this is a kid who held off for a while, got some of his best friends really good looks because great coaches were coming in and seeing, hey, maybe these guys are a little bit more talented than we give them credit for. Maybe this is more than just a one-man show. Robert Kimdichie did that. A 17-year-old kid made that choice. He's a huge guy. He's going to have an impactful uh, a career, most likely, at whatever school he chooses. I'm assuming, and, and I'll stand by, I think it is going to be Clemson. And I think some of this that just went down, this was, you know, I think it's an absolute certainty at this point he's going to end up at Clemson because I believe that what he did see from you, and I'm going to give Tiger Nation a, a good deal of credit on this. I didn't see a whole lot of Clemson Tiger people coming out of the woodworks and bad-mouthing this young man. Everybody kind of sat back and said, you know what, let's see, let, let's get, let, Paul Harvey said it best, let's hear the rest of the story. Let's let it all play out and see. Because in, in this day and age, everybody can be so brutal to these young men and treat them so poorly. But Clemson seemed to surround this young man with positive comments. And if you're right that Ryan Carter is just the icing on the cake to get Kim Dietschy here. And Clemson offers and Ryan accepts and he comes and he plays at Clemson for four years. If that's the worst thing that you can think of to come out of this situation, especially if Robert Kim Dietschy turns out to be an unbelievable player, one of the best to maybe ever play at Clemson University. And your kids are remembering the stories like these. That's right. Refrigerator Perry. Will Robert Kimdichie go down as one of the greats in Clemson Tiger history? He may. The opportunity is there. And if he does, is it not worth that one scholarship? Because the other two guys are definitely worthy of that scholarship. And ultimately, isn't this about the kids' education? Really? At the end of the day? We'll be back with more Tiger Nets Hall. Everybody sing Tiger Rag at the top of your lungs and we'll party like it's 1981. Hate the thought of shopping? All that hassle and can't find what you're looking for anyway? We understand. Retail stores make it difficult. Instead, try www.edistooutdoors.com. 
Edisto Outdoors features performance apparel and gear engineered for performance, comfort, and style. EdistoOutdoors.com. You'll enjoy the shopping and you'll enjoy the products. Great products from people who care. Hey there, Clemson Tiger fans. If you're interested in advertising with Clemson Podcasts, go to ClemsonPodcasts.com and click on the advertising link. And as always, go Tigers! Have you ever wondered how you could make a difference in someone's life? What if you could help hundreds or even thousands of children? You might think it impossible, but it's within your reach. Right now, today. Students in the U.S. rank 32nd in world math skills. It's time for our children to catch up. And you can help become an owner of one of the world's fastest growing franchises, Mathnasium. Mathnasium is the leading math-only learning center in the U.S. Its only purpose is to make our kids better at math. Imagine helping hundreds, even thousands of students in your community improve in school and raise their self-esteem, all while doing something you truly love. Call us at 800-663-9549 to learn more about Mathnasium's exciting franchise opportunities. That's 800-663-9549 to learn how you can make a difference. Doing something you truly love. That's 800-663-9549. 800-663-9549. Want to hear the sound of hassle-free traveling? Amtrak takes the hassle out of traveling to over 500 destinations. You can stretch out in a spacious seat, relax in a sleeping car, and enjoy a hot meal in the dining car. And for those who want to kick back and take in the scenery, go right ahead. For everything you get on Amtrak, the one thing you won't get is this. So whether you're going to a family reunion or an away game, make it a whole lot nicer on Amtrak. Book your trip today at Amtrak.com or call 1-800-USA-RAIL. Welcome back in to Tiger Net Talk. I'm your host, Lawton Swan, and, you know, I had somebody ask me the other day. It was funny. I was doing the show, and uh, I apologize. I'm going to adjust the mic here. The earpiece on this headset's getting kind of funny, getting kind of squirrely. But um, I had somebody say, well, that, that big microphone, you sure are quiet. So I turned the volume up just a little bit on the uh, vocal room, and for whatever reason, it seems to be only the microphone that gives me the problem hearing myself uh, in my left ear, which is very strange. But anyway, we'll, we, we will do, we will, you know, we'll grind it out. We're like Michael Jordan in the finals, you know, you, you know, we, we might have the flu a little bit, might be something wrong with the earpiece, but we're going to keep rolling along here for you about 18 to 20 minutes here into the program. Ways you can take part with us, as always, hashtag TN Talk on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. We're at Clemson Podcast. Email us, Clemson81 at gmail.com. Phone number is 803-450-0086. And I don't think you're going to find a whole lot of people on Vocal who have a phone number for you to call. But we do, and we would definitely love to hear from you and get your opinions on some of the things we've talked about, your take on the Robert Kim Dietschy situation at Clemson. And I'll say this, too. You know, this isn't a kid who's doing the multiple hat tricks at the end of the season. He doesn't come across as a self-absorbed young man. He doesn't seem to be uh, one who thinks that he's better than the team or that he is entitled to anything. You know, I think Robert Kim Dietschy was just trying to get his buddies a, a, a look, and there's nothing wrong with that. It wasn't a tactic to sway anybody in any direction. And like I said before, I really think this probably strengthens his situation with the Clemson Tigers. I think it strengthens the relationship between he and the coaching staff as they've probably talked to him and walked him through some of what's been going on. And I'm really proud of the fact that this situation right now seems to be put to rest outside of a few people here and there still carrying on with the fodder of is this young man taking it too far, trying to influence Clemson University. I I just, you know, I really think that this probably solidified it more than it did everything else. My biggest concern out of the whole matter is this. 
I can only imagine me and four or five of my best friends going off to college together and being uh, the number one recruit in the country, away from home. Sometimes those influences, you know, when you're at home, when you're at Grayson High School in Loganville, Georgia, and, you know, you're going out to the McDonald's with your boys, mom and dad or family members might be right there in town to say, ah, ah, ah. Yeah, might not, yeah, be careful. You get off to university like Clemson, as nice of a town as it is, as great of a, a feeling there is around Clemson University, without that, you know, the parental influence, you know, those people in your ear saying, be careful, that would be my biggest concern about him having all these teammates with him, the decision-making. Not saying that, that – you know, he's a, a, a bad young man and he's made poor decisions in the past or the same thing for his friends. It's just kind of that, you know, the first time you're away maybe, do you do something that you normally wouldn't do? That's probably the big, you know, the big thing for me. Now, real quick, segment number two, we're not going to do a, a whole lot here with this segment uh, that pertains so much to Clemson University, but there was a great post, and I love to scour TigerNet for posts that bring you uh, information that you might otherwise not run into. And this was, it came from the Nebraska.247 sports board. And it was a, a, a note written or an article written about the NCAA probation, a post actually, and who's been on it the most. And uh, here is your top, I guess, uh, three, four, five, six, seven or so at the top of the most sanctioned programs in the history of college football. Number one, congratulations to Southern Methodist. Number two, Southern California. Number three, Auburn. Number four, there's a three-way tie. I was gonna, that's why I said I was going to do the top five, but then I was like, no, nah, I really got to do seven. You've got Alabama, Michigan State, and Oklahoma. Notable mentions tied for 11th is the South Carolina Gamecocks. So, there are your top programs all time with NCAA sanctions. Now, there are also some other side notes here. Schools with the most years of bowl bans. Coming in at number one, there's a tie between Auburn and Southern Methodist. Southern California is third, followed by Florida, Houston, Kansas State, Miami, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. All those teams tied at four there. Hmm, Auburn. Hmm, Southern Cal. Anyone? And finally, on 21 occasions, a bowl ban has kept a current football bowl subdivision team from winning a conference championship or has prevented them from competing in the conference championship game, or has kept them out of a bowl game. Alabama, Arizona State, Auburn in 57 and in 1993. And there's finally our Clemson Tigers back in 82 and 83. Florida, Kentucky, Miami, Michigan State, North Carolina State, Oklahoma, Southern Cal, Southern Methodist, Texas A&M, and Wyoming. So there you have it, some of your most penalized schools in the history of college football. Other news and notes. Big news came out of the opening out in Oregon as Ryan Jenkins chose the Clemson Tigers over the Oklahoma uh, State Cowboys. Ryan Jenkins, who is the brother of Martin Jenkins, owned the Clemson team already. Uh, decided that it was his time, and we knew as he went out there last week that he may be making his commitment. He's a kid who I've said over and over I haven't been real high on, but there is a, a very important spot to be played on this Clemson Tiger team at that slot wide receiver position, and he fits the billing perfectly. And I do think that with a little bit of seasoning, this is a young man who can really uh, have a good career at Clemson. But as of right now, and somebody said to me the other day on Twitter, they said, well, who would you rather have? Well, we'll get to some of those who I'd rather have, and I think there are many of the same that you would, but you, you've got to have all the cogs in the system. This 
commitment just didn't excite me overly. But it doesn't mean that he can't pan, that he won't pan out, I should say, to be one of the better recruits that come in uh, this season. In other Atlantic Coast Conference news, former Boston College running back Montel Harris will be playing his senior season at Temple. Harris had already graduated from Boston College, and he will transfer over. Now, Harris came in the last season with an opportunity to be to surpass the Atlantic Coast Conference career rushing record. Of course, a knee injury, though, gave him a medical red shirt. Repeated violations of team rules had him move on. So Montel Harris will wrap up his career playing for Temple. A great article about which teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference get the best bang for their buck. And there's no surprise probably for most of you to find out that that is Clemson and Terry Don Phillips with head coach Dabo Sweeney. We spoke last week about the rising and escalating salaries that have surrounded the Clemson Tiger program, but where else is that money going to go? Uh, it's not like we've got to pay multi-million dollar players. All we got to do is give a couple of guys some $100,000 scholarships at the end of a four-year career. Everything else can go into the facilities and the pockets of the men calling the shots. That's why Chad Morris is the highest paid offensive coordinator in college football. That's why Brent Venables is one of the higher paid defensive coordinators. And that's why Dabo Sweeney is the bargain as a head coach in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And you consider the fact that Clemson has played for two Atlantic Coast Conference championships under Dabo Sweeney. I was cutting the grass today, and, and, and I thought for a minute, and, and some of you would say blasphemy when I say this. Some of you are going to say blasphemy to this statement. And some of you are going to agree. Dabo Sweeney has the opportunity right now, the way this – is setting up, and you look at the recruiting. We're going to touch on that in the final segment of the program briefly. You look at this recruiting class, some of the guys that may be coming in a little later this month, some of the top guys at their position nationally. And Dabo Sweeney, dare I say, is setting himself up. And the reason I thought of this is because there was an ESPN article talking about the greatest coach at your university and how he impacted, how he impacted your program if you take his stats out. You know, where does your greatest coach kind of rank compared to everyone else who's coached there? And dare I say, during a time when the Atlantic Coast Conference is probably stronger than many people, uh, well, stronger than it was before the Florida States, the Miamis, the Virginia Techs came into this league. Now, those teams have been down, especially Miami. But I think you could argue that if Dabo Sweeney can continue on the path that he's on right now, he could end up being the greatest coach that Clemson has ever had. And some of you are probably yelling at me and saying, moron, how could you say such a thing? But I'm going to tell you this. You can't handle the truth. You guys just can't handle the truth. And the truth of the matter is this. Right now, the way things are shaping up, if the Atlantic Coast Conference is going to be in the, the power of five conferences, if you will, and Clemson or Florida State or Miami are going to represent this league or Virginia Tech in the Orange Bowl or maybe in the, the, the four-team playoff that will probably expand at some point, there's a real chance to build something special here. You get the number one recruit in the country. You got the number one guy next season in the country interested in your program. Last year, whether or not you really think Jadavion Clowney was playing Clemson or not, I should say, two years ago, Clemson was right there in the mix for the number one guy in the country then. This is a coaching staff in Dabo Sweeney who has done an outstanding job when he came in midseason for a, a, a head coach who may have gotten a lot because of his father's name. And I, I hate to say that about Tommy Bowden now, but you hadn't seen Tommy Bowden's name cropping up a whole lot to get back in the business. You hadn't, you hadn't seen a whole lot of that. So I just wonder if Dabo Sweeney continues on the path that he's on, could it be, could it be that he ends up being the greatest coach in Clemson Tiger history? And I can hear you guys. You are an idiot wrapped in a moron. But Give him a little time, and I think you might be surprised. There are many Dabo Sweeney haters out there. I think it's pretty unfair. However, I will tell you this. 
the opportunity exists for a very special career if things continue the way they have for Coach Lee. Stay with us here on Tiger Net Talk. I ain't speaking about a jersey, I'm speaking about income. Did you hear that, Elizabeth? Here come the big one! Have you ever wondered how you could make a difference in someone's life? What if you could help hundreds or even thousands of children? You might think it impossible, but it's within your reach. Right now, today, students in the U.S. rank 32nd in world math skills. It's time for our children to catch up. And you can help become an owner of one of the world's fastest growing franchises, Mathnasium. Mathnasium is the leading math only learning center in the U.S. Its only purpose is to make our kids better at math. Imagine helping hundreds, even thousands of students in your community improve in school and raise their self esteem, all while doing something you truly love. Call us at 800 663 9549 to learn more about Mathnasium's exciting franchise opportunities. That's 800 663 9549 to learn how you can make a difference. Doing something you truly love. That's 800 663 9549. 800 663 9549. Hate the thought of shopping? All that hassle and can't find what you're looking for anyway? We understand. Retail stores make it difficult. Instead, try www.edistooutdoors.com. Edisto Outdoors features performance apparel and gear engineered for performance, comfort, and style. Edistooutdoors.com. You'll enjoy the shopping and you'll enjoy the products. Great products from people who care. Hey there, Clemson Tiger fans. If you're interested in advertising with Clemson Podcasts, go to ClemsonPodcasts.com and click on the advertising link. And as always, go Tigers! Listen, if you're considering buying hardwood flooring, don't do anything until you've written down this number and received your free Lumber Liquidators catalog. The flooring was high quality with an unbeatable price tag. Call in the next 10 minutes to get your free catalog. What I bought at Lumber Liquidators vastly higher quality than flooring I had installed six years ago, and for a fraction of the cost. So if you want great hardwood flooring at unbeatable prices, trust Lumber Liquidators. We buy direct from the mills. Call right now to get our flooring guide and catalog absolutely free. It's filled with top quality hardwood flooring, including solid hardwoods, laminates, and bamboos, and even Bella Wood prefinished flooring with a 100-year transferable warranty. The same floor Bob Vila has in his home. This free catalog is full of tips, ideas, and our flooring project list to make your buying decisions easy. Hurry, call right now to get a copy of this free guide and catalog. Call 877-238-6302 to get your free copy now. 877-238-6302. 877-238-6302. Welcome back in to Tiger Net Talk. I'm your host, Lawton Swan. You're listening to Orange Sky. What a fantastic little jam this is. You know, kind of kind of mellow. A little more mellow than uh, I might, you may be used to here listening to the program. You want to learn how to listen to our shows? Let me tell you. Go to ClemsonPodcast.com. Click on the Radio Affiliates tab at the top of the page. And not only will you find the stations that we're going to be broadcasting on this season, we're still trying to lock those down. So uh, go out there. Tell your local radio affiliate, hey, we need more Clemson sports talk. And we want to hear it from the guys over at ClemsonPodcast.com. And we'll set that up. I had a dream but go by our website, stood beneath an click on man. Radio Affiliates, and you'll learn how to take part in the show live here on Vocal. Archive programs going to be on uh, YouTube.com. We've got all of that going on. We keep you up to date. I, you know, I try to be as tech savvy as I can. I try to give you a multitude of ways to listen to the program, and some of you like to do it. Uh, by using a, a podcast edition of the show. Well, let me tell you, you can hear shows from Clemson Podcast uh, while you're on the go with the Stitcher Smart Radio application. It's a free news, talk, and mobile app available for your smartphone. And when you download Stitcher to hear our programs, you have a chance to win some money. And I know you guys like money. $100, that's right. Downloading is quick and easy. Just find Stitcher in the App Store, download it, punch in our promo code, Clemson Podcasts. And if I could go back, if I could go back, I would probably change the name and not have an S on the end of podcast, but I saw the potential for growth. So it's Clemson, P-O-D-C-A-S-T-S, and you're automatically entered to win 
$100. The latest episodes of our programs will be waiting for you in your favorites. And there are lots of other amazing shows, too, always available on demand. No syncing. You don't have to plug it in to your computer anymore. It's the Stitcher Smart Radio application. And don't forget our promo code, Clemson Podcasts, when you register. You get one chance to win but a lifetime of amazing shows to hear whenever you want and wherever you want. And Sophia is checking in with us in the chat room. And you guys got to do that, too. We had so many people viewing the show, but not enough people participating with us on the program. Not enough people who hit the join button. Not enough people who come in and get involved. And we'll go out to our first text question. It comes from Sophia. She says, long time no see. You're right, Sophia. It has been. We try to do the show uh, once a week. I don't know that we'll be on next week, as I mentioned in the opening segment. But um, we are definitely going to keep things coming. I'll tell you what we've got coming up in a couple of weeks, though. Assuming the wife has the baby and we miss next week's program, here's what we've got coming up for you. Our Coastal Division preview the following week and then the Atlantic Coast Conference. Excuse me, the Atlantic Division uh, preview for you as well. So we've got both of those coming up. And then uh, we'll wrap up the entire program before we get to August with our predictions on who's going to play for the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship and how that will go down. Will we give it to Florida State like a lot of those people out there, those national media members who con- constantly, I-, I rack my brain, they always believe it's going to be Florida State, and Florida State continues to fall on their face, having won only one Atlantic Coast Conference Championship since 2005. We mentioned last week Florida State only appeared in the Atlantic Coast Conference game twice. That's the same as your Clemson Tigers in the seven years of the Atlantic Coast Conference tournament. Now, facilities, you know, we we talked about coaching salaries last week, and this week we're going to focus on facilities briefly. Facilities are, are such a key now in this arms race in college sports. In Clemson, when you look back to 1995, when I came into school in Tigertown, Compared to what was going on at some other programs in the country, Death Valley was a subpar facility. The West Zone was atrocious. And really, without the vision of the athletic department and Coach Tommy Bowden, I'm not sure we would have gotten to where we are. Death Valley was built back in 1941. The stadium was constructed during the tenure of Jess Neely. And I kind of wonder, how long can you go with a stadium like Death Valley? Is it a venue that's going to last eons like the, uh, the Coliseum in Rome? Or is there going to come a point where Clemson decides that they do need a new stadium? And what do you do? Because I don't think the fans would ever want to vacate the hill and using the hill. So what, what, what do you, renovate one side of the stadium in the offseason and do the next side the next year? Is that even possible? Can it be done? You know, Frank Howard was told by Jess Neely just before he left Clemson to go to Rice, don't ever let them talk you into building a big stadium. Just put you know, 10,000 seats behind the YMCA. It's all you'll ever need. Then the original stadium, when it was constructed, $125,000. It was a 20-seat stadium, and in 1958, Clemson added 18,000 sideline seats. Clemson continued to expand. In 1978, the top deck south was added. In 83, the top deck north was added. And that's when Clemson's Death Valley became one of the largest stadiums on campus in the country at over 80,000 people. But back in 2004, when the West Zone kicked off, in the West Zone, I think when you compare it to the rest of the stadium, it's like the hood ornament. It's like the Rolls-Royce hood ornament. Sure, you, know, you can look at the rest of the stadium. That's nice. You know, it looks good. Yeah, but, ooh, what model is that? Ah, that's that's a Rolls Royce. That's not a, I hate to bash a car. Oh, Hyundai. They look good. Hyundais look good. But uh, maybe Hyundai wants to be a sponsor. Who knows? Anyway, Clemson continues to expand, upgrading the, the uh, board in the end zone to high definition. Going to be putting two new uh, boards in the, West end zone, which I think is going to be nice as well. Those are all pretty much most of the time are going to be in some sort of shade, which will help people see them. If you ever have trouble when the sun is setting in the west, seeing the end zone in the east, now that, that problem should not exist. 
How about Little John Coliseum? There's a site that I think we probably could have gotten rid of. Back in 2003 when Clemson uh, debated that move, instead they overhauled the entire facility. Little John Coliseum was built back in 1966, ladies and gentlemen. It opened in 1968, cost Clemson $8 million to build it. In 2003, we spent $31 million renovating it. And I, did we get, you know, do you feel like we got our money's worth out of the new facility? Has Little John Coliseum changed so much that you feel like that was a good $31 million spent? I'm not sure it has. Now, we did increase the square footage. We did add the extra practice facility. And there are more renovations going on now. Clemson is going to be adding even more practice facilities. An additional facility will be built in the southwest corner of Little John Coliseum. So, I mean, this is a facility now that you have to go with. But if you go back to 2003, was that opportunity missed by Clemson Tiger fans? Was that opportunity missed? missed I'm not sure maybe it was and finally Doug Kingsmore we could get into Riggs Field and the others but Doug Kingsmore Stadium opened in 1970 it was renovated off and on throughout the years up until 2002 and Doug Kingsmore gave the athletic department one million dollars and what was formerly known as beautiful Tiger Field became known as Doug Kingsmore Stadium 2005, Doug Kingsmore Stadium got Paul Vision, new lights in 2008, 2009, a new practice facility and field turf was put in. So Clipson has clearly improved the stadiums, but have they improved it to a point where a stadium like Little John Coliseum, have we put so much in, has it become maybe almost like a money pit at this point, sadly? I think Doug Kingsmore Stadium has a lot of life left. I believe that Death Valley has a lot of life left. But I think like most of you, if there was one thing you could change at Clemson University right now, it might actually be, excuse me, it might actually be Little John Coliseum and what to do. I mean, is there a way that we could be a little bit more competitive perhaps with a better stadium? In basketball, I think Brad Brownell has done a, a great job so far. I mean, I really do think that Brad Brownell has come into a good situation and done a really good job. But is it possible, and would you say that Clemson, perhaps down the road, needs to really look at the possibility of renovating Little John Coliseum? One more segment. Got a little itch in the throat. Going to go to a quick commercial break. And we'll be back to touch on recruiting and get you out of here. Stay with us. Final segment of Tiger Net Talk right after this. We love that basketball. They're playing basketball. We love that basketball. They're playing basketball. We love that basketball. Hey there, Clips of Tiger fans. If you're interested in advertising with Clemson Podcasts, go to ClemsonPodcasts.com and click on the advertising link. And as always, go Tigers! Listen, if you're considering buying hardwood flooring, don't do anything until you've written down this number and received your free Lumber Liquidators catalog. The flooring was high quality with an unbeatable price tag. Call in the next 10 minutes to get your free catalog. What I bought at Lumber Liquidators is a vastly higher quality than flooring I had installed six years ago, and for a fraction of the cost. So if you want great hardwood flooring at unbeatable prices, trust Lumber Liquidators. We buy direct from the mills. Call right now to get our flooring guide and catalog absolutely free. It's filled with top quality hardwood flooring, including solid hardwoods, laminates, and bamboos, and even Bella Wood prefinished flooring with a 100-year transferable warranty. The same floor Bob Vila has in his home. This free catalog is full of tips, ideas, and our flooring project list to make your buying decisions easy. Hurry, call right now to get a copy of this free guide and catalog. Call 877-238-6302 to get your free copy now. 877-238-6302. 
Welcome back into Tiger Net Talk. I apologize for that final break, but we're going to roll on. And Ray emails us. Ray says, I'm not sure if the following has been thrown out, but for all we know, Clemson may have been considering offering Ryan Carter anyway. Per his high school coach, Carter has been timed at a 4-3 and a 4-4 as a solid hitting defensive back. He was the punt returner and played a large role in a defense which only gave up a little over 400 yards for the season. They went 15-0, won the Class 5A title in Georgia. And in looking at his highlights on the web, he looks like a nice player. However, now that the Tigers, now, excuse me, now if the Tigers offer, most will say they caved. And that would mean that Ryan Carter could become the tragedy, the tragic figure in this saga. Excellent point, Ray, and thank you for listening to the program. And you all can email us throughout the week, clemson81 at gmail.com. You can call us throughout the week. We've got the phone lines open and the uh, answering machine, or uh, I guess the voicemail, answering machine, that's a old school device, the voicemail is up, 803-450-0086. That's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Tweet to us, hashtag TN Talk. Follow us on Twitter. We're at Clemson Podcast. And thank you to the guys over at TigerNet.com for getting us on the front page as we do our program here for you each and every Wednesday evening. I want you to go by our site, ClemsonPodcast.com, and check out our new fresh Tiger gear. Order your Pitchfork Returns t-shirt as Clemson looks to wake up Pitchfork Ben Tillman for the 2012 football season. We've had a lot of people who said they enjoy the shirts we've got out there. Check them out at ClemsonPodcast.com. Click on Tiger Store at the top. Finally, we get to recruiting after some sad news. Former Clemson football player and member of the national championship team, Bob Mayberry, passed away this past week. Uh, Bob Mayberry played on that national championship team, died after his long bout with cancer. He was 51 years old, played in 39 games during his four years for Clemson. 20 of those ball games, he was the starter. He was a reserve on that 1981 national championship team. He uh, ran a car dealership in Monroe, North Carolina. Our thoughts and prayers, of course, go out to uh, Bob Mayberry and his family. I uh, was listening to ESPN Radio just today, you know, and it was they were doing the Jimmy V foundation uh, stuff and that that stuff is dear to my heart my mother passed away when I was 16 years old back in 1993 uh, from cancer and you know that when I hear Jimmy V go on uh, right about that same time I remember all the stuff I was going through and and how difficult that was uh, but that fight to live that so many so many courageous cancer patient patients have it's just a real unbelievable thing, and it's something if you've if you've seen somebody fighting the way uh, that these people who have been afflicted with this terrible disease fight, uh, it really does kind of put things into perspective. Uh, there are a couple of things in life that put things into perspective for me, especially when dealing with sports. One, there are, well, there are three really. Uh, one is uh, obviously soldiers and people who go out and, and put their life on the line so that I can do this show for you and uh, I'm thankful for so many of them writing me from Afghanistan or Iraq and saying you know this was the only way I could listen to Clemson Tiger sports Th that means the world to me but their commitment to our country uh, far far outweighs anything that I could ever do or will probably do in my life secondly uh, young kids who overcome disabilities just you know, really touch me, and, and I think that um, it's a you know it, it says something about the human existence to see these young people, much younger than you or I, and they're overcoming these struggles and, and learning to deal with what life has dealt them, and end up going on to having great inspirational stories and lives, and you know, living as if everything is perfect in their life, and and that gets to me, and finally. When you see somebody uh, or when you hear about somebody like Bob Mayberry or, or, or Jim Valvano who, you know, fight, just fight to be here for another day. So it's definitely sad to hear this news. 
Um, moving on, and the best way you can from something like that, 51 years old, Bob Mayberry, former Clemson Tiger on that national championship team, passes away. We'll focus briefly on recruiting here, and we will get you out. Stretch the show a little bit, but that's the way we had to do it. Montrevious Adams, the number one defensive tackle in the country, high on Clemson. Clemson was the first to offer him. It looks like it's down to a Tigers v. Tigers matchup. Not Clemson LSU, but Clemson and Auburn right now battling it out for the big guy. I told you a couple of weeks ago this is a young man whose mother felt one way about his commitment, not to Clemson, not to, uh, not to Auburn, but maybe even Alabama. It looks like Clemson's going to get another chance with him. He's visiting on July the 20th. And the great thing about Clemson right now is they are in the mix for a lot of great players. Kendall Fuller, who was out at the opening just the other day, um, Kendall Fuller, teammates with uh, Dorian O'Daniel. O'Daniel uh, has admittedly said that now maybe Virginia Tech has a slight edge. A couple of Fuller's brothers play for Virginia Tech. He had an older brother as well who played for Virginia Tech. He's down to two. He will be visiting Clemson on July 20th. Dabo Swinney bringing in and hopefully bringing out all the guns as he brings in some what could be very – uh, elite weapons. Now, Vernon Hargraves is a guy that I wouldn't say Clemson has cooled on, but it would appear that maybe Mackenzie Alexander has kind of risen in the rankings a little bit, especially ESPN rankings have uh, Mackenzie Alexander very high at the defensive back position. But Hargraves rolled his ankle out of the opening, and we didn't get to see a whole lot out of him in what was going to be a big competition between he and Kendall Fuller. Uh, he is ranked as the number one, or excuse me, the number four overall prospect in the country, and Mackenzie Alexander is rated as the number six overall player in the country uh, by ESPN. So Clemson right there in the mix with three of the top defensive backs in the country right now. Tyrone Crowder is another guy that I've uh, told you about in the past. Cousins of Stephon Anthony. Uh, he grew up in South Carolina, lived in South Carolina as a child. Big kid, strong offensive lineman, a position that Clemson really needs to strengthen. He's a young man who I think the Tigers have a great shot at. And finally, with the running back position, I think it's probably a two-horse race. Uh, I think it comes down to Derek Green or Tyshawn Dye, to be honest with you. And uh, Clemson right in the mix with both of those guys. That's a good feeling uh, when you look at the fact that uh, Dye's the number – excuse me, Derek Green is the number one running back in America. He brings some intangibles. You know, when you talk about effort, you watch that kid run. He's got a high motor, just powers through guys. He's a big kid. Uh, how that translates to the collegiate level is always a little bit tricky, though, because when you're playing against high school guys, sometimes uh, just being an elite athlete can really help you. But he looks like he is the real deal. Derek Green, Tyshawn Dye, and perhaps maybe even Alvin Kamara all in the mix there. And we talked about wide receivers earlier. We'll leave the defense out for today. We'll come back to them. Uh, we'll, we'll finish up here with uh, the wide receiving core, and, and then we'll worry more uh, about some other guys later. Uh, but finally, Marquez, Mar Marquez North out of, uh, out of the Charlotte area is one of the top wide receivers in the country. He has Clemson near the top. Many people think that distance will be a factor for him. He's a kid I really like. I like the big wide receivers much better. you got to make a place for them all. And, uh, you know, also I think another guy that many people want to keep their eyes on and, and focus on might be Demarcus Robinson. Demarcus Robinson out of Florida, Clemson. Uh, Marcus Robinson was his cousin who played at South Carolina, if I'm if I remember that correctly. Uh, but you know the question becomes then: Is, is Clemson uh, going to be willing to offer a guy like Robinson? Well, it's up to them to figure it out, I guess. And we'll keep our eye on it. I'm looking forward to that July the 20th, though, as so many star players are going to be on campus. There's a lot of great names out there still in the mix with Clemson, and it's definitely an exciting time if you're a Tiger fan to keep your eyes on some of these guys. And uh, hopefully, if the ball bounces the right way, you win championships by getting great players in there. I've always said that having you know, a five-star and a four-star doesn't guarantee anything, but I've also always said it certainly doesn't hurt to have rankings on your guys like that and right now, Clemson impressing everybody with the recruiting class that they may be putting together. Keep your eyes tuned to July the 20th. 
that'll be a big day this summer for Clemson Tiger fans. Well, folks, that's all the time we have for you today here on TigerNet Talk. I will be taking next week off most almost certainly for the birth of our first little girl. So we'll take that week off. We'll see you the following week right here, 10 p.m. Wednesdays with TigerNet Talk. Y'all take care now, and go Tigers!